Hello students, welcome to the answer writing program. So today is the 1st of March and uh, in March month we will be dealing with the GS1 syllabus. We will be dealing with art and culture. We will be dealing with the modern India and the geography aspects. But we will not be dealing with the portion of the syllabus that are exclusively means oriented like we will not touch world history, we will not touch post independence and society part. Okay, so let's start with our discussion from the topic art and culture and the today's topic is architecture, sculpture, traditional arts, craft etc. So let's take an overview of all the three questions. The first question is related to the Mauryan art. The second question is related to the features of Madhubani and Worli folk paintings. The third question is related to Indo-Islamic architecture and what were the new elements that were introduced under the Mughals empire. So let's start our discussion with the very first question. The Mauryan art was noted for its massive simplicity extraordinary precision and accuracy and spirited realism we need to illustrate means we need to give the examples etc so the question is setting the context that the Mauryan art was noted for these dimensions like the simplicity extraordinary precision and accuracy and spirited realism so there are the three dimensions of the question we need to write some examples in each of the these three dimensions to substantiate our answer to fulfill the demand of the question that is to illustrate okay so in introduction what you can write you can write about the major broad perspective of the modern empire like you can start via the establishment of this modern empire the duration you can write about that it has started from 322 bce and it lasted till majorly till 185 bce so it was one amongst the uh, biggest empire in the uh, indian history and it was it has started with the chandragupta maurya and uh, it continued like uh, majorly till ashoka where the art and architecture was flourished to its zenith so you can start with this thing then you can write uh, towards the question that the art and the architecture in this particular empire has the grandeur uh, element in it has the spirited realism simplicity precision that left an indelible mark on the indian art and architecture so this way you can start the introduction now from the prelims point of view you should know about the major rulers of modern empire what were the major artwork architecture in this particular empire like the major art and architecture was di majorly divided into the court art and the popular art. The court art majorly was palaces, pillars and stupas and the popular art uh, was like sculptures, pottery, caves etc. So because this empire is the important for the prelims oriented uh, for the uh, prelims uh, questions also so you should be very well versed with all these aspects what are the major names like uh, who patronized what etc. And because Ashoka, uh, due to the invasion on Kalinga Empire and the duration of the major bloodshed and how he renounced, uh, renounced this bloodshed and opted for the Buddhism. So this was some background and then in the later uh, ages, the, all the pillars, stupas have the uh, element of this Buddhism uh, ideology in that. So if you know some basics with respect to the background of that particular empire, you will be, it will be very easy to learn these aspects of art and culture also. Okay, so let's start our <coughs> major discussion towards the body part that how modern art has this massive simplicity, has the precision and accuracy and the spirited realism. Now, massive simplicity, it means they were massive, their palaces, their stupas, they were grand, their caves were grand, they were massive in scale, but yet they were simple. It means they were not overly decorated or engraved, engrossed with some particular elements. Precision and accuracy, it means the elements with uh, have some accuracy and the precision in their architecture form. Then spirited realism is about 
whatever the sculptures, the relief features they have made, they have the element of the realism. It means the idols or the sculptures they were making, they have the element of reality. They have the element of movement, motion in that. So starting with, you can write about, either you can write it into the court art that was commissioned by the Mauryan rulers and the popular art, you can divide it into this way. Uh, the popular art which was uh, popularized due to the masses and amongst the masses. So you can write either this way and then you can write about some palaces name, some stupas, some uh, pillars name, some uh, features with respect to that or you can write it directly in this particular way. Okay, starting with the Ashoka pillar. One of the major feature of this uh, modern empire was the pillars. The pillars will have the element like shaft, then capital, inverse lotus shape or you can say the bell shape, the capital figure, uh, the capital, then a bacchus in the round form or in the rectangular form. Then on the top of this is some capital figure. So, for the prelims point of view, you should know the multiple pillars, the major pillar edicts related to modern empire. So this, in this particular question, how we can deal with this, that this shaft, these were major monoliths. So again, they tell about the simplicity, about the precision, about the accuracy, about the grandeur of its uh, time. That the, they carved from the single piece of the stones, these uh, Ashokan pillars, they exhibit simple but yet elegant designs. There were, so see this uh, picture of Ashokan pillar, there were the animals figure in it, there were the geometrical patterns, there were the plants uh, figures on this pillars also. So you can write about some name that is the Ashokan pillar and you can also give some features or the characteristics related to that particular pillar. Next is about the Sarnath Lion Capital. So this is the Sarnath Lion Capital. You can see that the four loins are si uh, standing one uh, to the other and there is the major phrase in that there is a wheel, there are the other animal figures on the this lotus, inverted lotus is there. So they are standing back to back side to side and surrounded by the stylized wheels and lotus flowers. They were crafted from the sandstone. In this major time, tuner sandstone was being used. So, this pillar also, this loin capital also shows the meticulous attention uh, that has been paid for the details and the precision. Next is about Didar Ganj Yakshi. The very, again, the major sculpture of this modern time was the Yaksha and Yakshini and uh, so Didar Ganj Yakshi has the feature, its body language, facial expressions, they exudes the sensuality and the vitality component. So you can write about that it shows the spirited uh, realism, it shows the essence of the human emotions and the movement. Okay, so this is the picture of uh, Didar Ganj Yakshi. Next is about Bharhut Stupa. As we have discussed that the Ashoka has uh, patronage the Buddhism and he uh, made, he uh, helped in making these stupas. So there were the ideology of the Buddhism also in that. So the Barhut stupa has the life history of Buddha uh, and intricate reliefs depicting scenes were there which depicts the life of Buddha. So th this is the Barhut stup. So these reliefs also exhibit extraordinary precision, details, portraying power, etc. Then comes to the modern caves. There were the multiple caves in that time like Barbara Caves, Lomas Rishi Caves and Sudama Caves in Bihar. Again, they show the very large scale caves. The, there are the very massive big caves were there. And the engravings or the sculptures or the relief features were like they were showing the day-to-day -day lives or the dynamism uh, of the communities at that particular time. So this uh, way you can write the body part. You can also add the element of the palaces. Uh, palaces also, they were so grand. Uh, Fahin, the Chinese traveler and the Megasthenes, the Greek historian has also portrayed uh, and also explained about the grandeur of the palaces at this particular time of the modern empire. 
ओके सो यू शुड नो अबाउट हु रोट वॉट अबाउट वॉट एम्पायर अबाउट द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ वॉट एम्पायर सो फ्रॉम द प्रिलिम्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इट शुड बी इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू शुड रिमेंबर ऑल दिस थिंग्स ओके मूविंग ऑन टू द कंक्लूजन वॉट यू कैन राइट यू कैन राइट अबाउट द लेगेसी एंड द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द मॉरन एम्पायर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द लेटर एम्पायर ऑल्सो लाइक दिस मॉरन आर्ट हैज सेट अ प्रेसिडेंट फॉर द सब्सिक्वेंट एम्पायर्स दे इंस्पायर दिस आर्किटेक्चरल एलिमेंट्स और द आर्किटेक्चरल एनहेंसमेंट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सातवाहना एंड द गुप्ता पीरियड्स ऑल्सो सो यू कैन राइट दिस थिंग इन द कंक्लूजन लेट सी द मॉडल आंसर starting with the background of the modern empire then uh, this modern arts with the simplicity and how it reflects precision and spirited realism then conclusion okay moving on to the next question again it's important for the prelims also you should know about the different uh, types or the characteristics of the paintings so the question is about the fog paintings the fog paintings are one of the finest expressions of creativity of local people so this also can be the question uh, in the prelims just one statement that these folk paintings uh, are majorly under the court art or the popular art so you should know that it represents the rural artistry or it shows the cultural heritage then in light of the statement we need to enumerate means we need to list down the features of madhubani and the worli painting so how we can start the introduction we can write the broader perspective that india is a land where there is a treasury of the different art architectures are there amongst those different arts one is the folk paintings which shows the rural artistry and the cultural heritage and amongst those folk paintings or the indian paintings the one uh, like two of the major important paintings are madhubani and the worli painting so we are coming from broader side to here like to madhubani and worli painting you can also write some recent context with respect to art and culture also in introduction as well as in conclusion like the artists in hyderabad are doing this worli paintings or the worli art on the uh, road side uh, walls uh, to represent the various issues that exist in the society and also for the other purpose to decorate the their city so you can write this aspect also okay starting with the major body part we need to write down the characteristics the different aspects or the features of these two paintings so this is the madhubani painting this is the worli painting so via figure just get some few basic concept that this uses only white and red ochre color which in hindi says that geru in majorly in north india it says that uh, geru color so they use geru and uh, red ochre and white and cow dung and mud and here very bright earthly colors are being used like all these colors these shows the dynamicity but these major colors are uh, made from the original or the natural content only like the orange color has come up from the palash flowers white color from the rice flower etc black color from the soot carbon from the coal etc like from the black cow dung uh, if we burn it so that if we use it it uh, creates a black color so there are the multiplicity of the colors in it first thing second is very intricate designs are there in this we can see that not even a like a single uh, st uh, straight lines are there but the crooked lines are there in this we can see that there are the leaves patterns uh, the mythological figures hindu deities are there flowers are there bamboo sticks are there the fine lines are there etc but in this it shows major the community or the society like major hunting part the uh, uh, religious or the prayers part and enjoying and major like their culture and major environmental aspects uh, aspects like there is a river there is a tree there are the some mountains etc so this is the major paintings from the broader perspective we have already seen let's move on to the body part so we need to write down the different features or the characteristics of madhubani and worli painting so starting with the origin they have been probably originated during the 7th century bc and it is approximately 3000 bc so it is older 
approximately then this madhubani then madhubani as the name suggests it is practice it was practiced in madhuban the part of bihar so it was practiced only by the women folks in bihar also known as a mithila painting and this worldly art was practiced by the worldly tribes of gujarat and maharashtra next is about as we have seen that uh, madhubani painting has used the bright colors and it used the red ochre uh, mud walls so these bright colors like yellow red green white orange are derived from the natural material next is about this uh, worldly art it is well known for using the white paint on ochre mud walls use of the chewed bamboo twig it means the branches of the tree or the bamboos chewed bamboo twigs to paint the walls but the recent this contemporary current artists they use the brushes also to paint the worldly paintings then next is about the mixture of the cow dung and the red mud was used themes of the painting as we have seen there were the lotus plant symbolic images were being used the bamboo grove fish birds snakes in the union so this represents the fertility next is about the religious deities natural motifs like sun moon temp, uh, tulsi plant etc were being uh, painted it depicts the various aspects of the daily life nature and mythology they often feature scenes from the hindu epics like ramayana and mahabharata and what about this worldly painting the majorly focus is on the community life the tribal life about showing their day to day functions like hunting uh, farming festivals social gatherings etc were being represented by the worldly paintings next is about there were the inti inti uh, intricate geometric patterns were there like the circles uh, rectangles triangles etc the lines were there uh, to represent the males and females with their dupattas etc with their figures okay and one major concept is about the tarpa dance tarpa dance is about the women are moving in the circular portion by holding their hands it represents the tarpa dance okay so where the circle of the dancers symbolizes the circle of life so this represents the tarpa dance next is about the styling so this madhubani painting uses very intricate and the colorful patterns they uses the two dimensional perspectives with the bold lines and this is the basic geometrical shapes like linear and rhythmic patterns means they use the repetitive patterns like if one woman is there they use show it as a other women also and this is a chain reaction okay next is about the featured sacred images like circle represents moon and sun triangle uh, represents mountains and trees and square represents the village life moving on to the next part about the way of painting see as we have seen in the image that there are very less or there are the no empty spaces even if the gaps are there they fill it with the flowers the lines the patterns birds even the geometric patterns okay in this no use of the straight line only the crooked lines were there dots circles triangles etc were there this madhubani paintings are used to decorate the walls of the newly wedded couple room with the cow dung and the mud to uh, represent it to uh, give them the best wishes or to show the piousness next is about Uh, this worldly art is used to decorate the huts of the worldly tribes so this was the major uh, features we have enumerated the features of madhubani and the worldly uh, paintings now coming on to the conclusion we can write about its importance we can write about the importance of the folk painting in the indian art uh, like legacy of indian art so this paintings exemplify the rich heritage and the artistic brilliance of the indian folk traditions their timeliness beauty continues to captivate audience worldwide and it serves as a testament to the cultural diversity and creativity of india's artistic legacy okay moving on to the model answer starting with some basic background of the india's uh, art forms how india is a treasure trove of art form then representing the features finally in one line the conclusion next moving on to the third question 
we need to discuss the important characteristics of Indo-Islamic architecture during the Sultanate period. So we need to write down the different characteristics like what were uh, the major uh, art architecture were there during this Indo-Islamic period or during the Sultanate period and how there were the different architectural styles and what were the new elements that have been introduced under the Mughal Empire. So this is the demand too. Okay, so in introduction, what we can write as the name suggests Indo-Islamic architecture. It means this architecture has the blend of uh, the Indian style as well as the Islamic style of uh, art, uh, architecture. So Indo-Islamic architecture. So this was majorly started during the Sultanate period and has attained or achieved its zenith during the Mughal uh, Empire. So this way you can start with the introduction you can also write about that indo-islamic architecture emerged during the medieval period as a blend as we have discussed it so it reflects the synthesis of the cultural influences from both the architectures and the arch uh, artistic expressions moving on to the major body part that what were the characteristics or uh, important characteristics of indo-islamic architecture the very first thing is about in this particular period during the Sultanate period majorly red sandstone was being used in uh, majorly all the architectural forms. So use of the red sandstone was there as we have seen in the Qutub Minar. It showcased the extensive use of the red sandstone the characteristics feature of Sultanate architecture. Next is about arches. The major architectural style was the use of this arches, arches. These arches were the shape of horseshoe also and pointed also like these pointed horseshoe. Okay, so there are, were the mostly usage of this arch as we have seen in the Alai Darwaza and blending the architectural elements with the Islamic and Indian design. Next is about minarets. Minars, again for the different purposes, like to represent its political presence, about the call for the prayer, and about its presence, that Islamic uh, religion is there. It represents about like, it's like the towers. Okay, so one uh, is about the Qutub Minar only. So this intricately designed minarets were constructed, serving both the functional and the ornamental purposes. Next is about the calligraphy. As you can see that this, these are the regions where the calligraphic patterns have been used. Majorly in the Arabic script were uh, being used and the geometric patterns were being used. Adding ornamental richnesses to the structures like Alai Darwaza and the Tomb of El Tutmish. Okay. Next, we need to write down the elements that have been introduced under the Mughal Empire. The very first thing is about the use of the white marble as we can see from the Moti Masjid that is in the Lal Kila and the Taj Mahal. Earlier the red sandstone was majorly being used now the white marble is also uh, started using. Next is about Pitra Dura inlay. Now what is Pitra Dura? In this particular inlay mechanism they made some designs they carved out of uh, marbles or whatsoever the things were there. So they carved out on the basic plain white marble. They make the shapes. They do the engrossings or encarvings. They took out the material from that. Then they paste it over in this hollow uh, slabs. And again on the surface they do the polishing and make finally these Pitra Dura. So there were the very intricate processes to uh, make all these Pitra Dura inlay uh, processes and inlay uh, these materials. Okay, so this is about incorporating semi precious stones, these were the semi precious stones into the marble to create intricate designs. Next is about the new element that the Mughal Empire was has added is about the large domes, the, these bulbous domes were being adored into the floral with the floral motifs adding grandeur it shows about the grand uh, feature of their empire as we have seen in the Badshahi mosque 
Next is about the Charbagh Garden. In this main monument is over here, main building and on that uh, four sides, these are the four gardens. These is named as Charbagh Gardens. So this again ensures or enhance the architectural complexes with the symmetrical layouts and aesthetics. Lot of lush green gardens were there. Next is about double dome structures. Double dome structure is about this for the outside and inside if we see from the inside it is like this but from outside we can see this. It is for the stability of the structure and it shows the grand uh, grandeur of this particular uh, building. Okay, So this double dome structure were introduced to represent that inner domes are there for the structural stability and the outer ornamental dome added grandeur as seen in the Humayu dome. Okay. Moving on to the conclusion, you can write about that how this Indo-Islamic architecture has carried out its uh, legacy till now also that this has evolved over the centuries. They have blended the diverse cultural influences and the design element in them. And this architectural achievement has started majorly in the Sultanate period and it uh, uh, attained its zenith in the Mughal period and how it shapes India's cultural landscape and inspires the future generations of architects and artisans. Okay, so this way you can write just summary part. Moving on to the model answer, starting with the background of this Indo-Islamic architecture, then the basic features, then what elements were added in the Mughal times. Finally, conclusion. Okay, so this way our discussion for today is over. So in the month of March, again I am repeating, we will be dealing with the GS1. We will be dealing with the topics that are prelims oriented. So uh, take the maximum advantage out of these discussions. Thank you and have a nice day and keep writing.